Welcome to Rambam in Depth. Today we're going to be discussing the halacha of impurity as it pertains to things that are in the sea. This is Perik Shishi, the sixth chapter of Hilchas Tumis Meis, Halacha Aleph. The Rambam here says as follows Atzamais Hadag Ve'erei, take the bones of a fish or its skin, Ha'esim Hen Kalim, and you make utensils out of them, Ein Mikalim Tumaklal. They are entirely not susceptible to tumma, to impurity. Not biblically, or not even rabbinically. Then he adds, Also the moss on the face of the water and the, and, and the like, they are also not susceptible to impurity. And why? Whatever is in the sea is ritually clean. As will be explained in the laws of Kalim, the laws of vessels. And therefore, he concludes, this is the practical application of it. Therefore, if you make a tent, a covering, from the skin of a fish, or the wool that grows in the sea, this Ehel will not become Tomei. Even though if there is something impure underneath it, together with other objects, it will convey the Tuma to them, but it itself cannot become Tomei because it is should be, it comes from the sea. Now in Hilchas Kalim, the beginning of Hilchas Kalim, the Rambam says more or less the same thing, but he adds something that he doesn't have over here. He says, Mepia Shmuel Lamdu. We heard this, this is part of the oral tradition. What he says over here is that there's a tradition, oral tradition, that when the Torah talks about all the things that were made from goats, it excludes the bones of fowl. They are not susceptible to impurity. So we know that it's not just things that grow in the sea, things that live in the sea that are not susceptible to tumah, but also the bones of a bird are not makabal tumah. So when he talks here in Hilchas Tumas Mes about Tumas Ohel, that the products of the sea, the skin of a fish, does not convey any tumah, does not, is not susceptible to tumah, to impurity, why doesn't he mention the same thing would be true about the skin of a, of a bird? That it, if that was an ohel, if that covered up on something that was tame, it won't become tame. Why only the ur hadag? There's a sefer, Eitzvah's Harambam, that gives some in-depth on every chapter of the Rambam. And he quotes a sefer called Das Leo, a contemporary sefer, gives the following explanation. It says, there's a fundamental difference between the reason why something that is in the sea is not susceptible to tuma, and the bird's skin is not susceptible to tuma. The difference is as follows. The reason why the skin of a bird is not susceptible to tuma because when it comes to tuma, in order for it to become tame, it has to have a certain type of significance as a keli, as a utensil. And the Torah teaches us that the skin of a bird is too fragile, you could say. It has no real significance, and therefore it can't become tummy. Not because there's something about a bird that can't become tummy, it's inherently impervious to tumor. It's because it lacks the sophistication that makes it possible to receive 
and be, to become Tame. When you're talking about things that are in the sea, fish, other things that are in the sea, the moss, the whatever it is, the reason why they're not Tame is because the water itself purifies them. It's a place of purity. And this is especially understood based on what the Chassidus teaches us, that the difference between land creatures and sea creatures are a metaphor for the difference between the way we see things living here on earth and the way they see things in the higher worlds. In the higher world, it's like the sea, where you can't live outside of that sea. You recognize your whole existence is the divine. Whereas when you're on land, as a metaphor for physical creatures, we don't, even though we come from the earth, we don't feel our dependence on the earth that we can't live without it. Of course, you need to have the food from the earth, but you could exist outside of the earth. A fish cannot exist outside of the water. That means that water is the metaphor for complete absorption in something that is spiritual. And that manifests itself in halacha, that anything that is in the sea is not susceptible to impurity. Therefore, the Das Eliyahu explains, when it comes to Tumas Eihel, the impurity of Eihel, it has nothing to do with the fact that, that it doesn't apply to fish. It's because there's a fundamental aspect of any sea creature that makes it the antithesis of impurity. Impurity and sea creatures are two opposite concepts. Therefore, it can't become Tame by touching it, having something Tame touch the, the fish, or by it being an ohel, being a covering. But when you talk about the bird, the reason why the bird is not susceptible to Tuma is not because it's fundamentally, inherently not capable of becoming Tame. It's because it lacks the sophistication of a keli. That only applies to, to Tuma that comes through touching, but Tuma that comes through ohel, ohel that doesn't apply.